By coding, and what I did by coding to use Muse, um, I'm Rainer Winkler, I come from Munich, and I work normally uh, with SAP. So in a different language, it's ABAP. Um, but uh, thankfully, uh, Tuna is working around the world and struggling uh, wherever he's asked to give a talk. And Daniel Meyer asked him to give a talk in 2015 at the SAP Insight Week in Munich. And he had a, how to say, he had a lot of coding running through and he explained as SAP people um, all the smooth visualizations and I uh, was looking on this and understanding nothing. Uh, but what came to my mind is, okay, there is someone who has a way to to, to get to understand coding in a different way. Um, and so I have to do something with it. Uh, what I did, uh, I, I, I wrote an extractor, because Moodle can be used for every language, so I can use it also for ABAP, and the point is SAP is more than ABAP. SAP is a big company that provides a computer language, ABAP, but also other tools, for instance, reporting tools like Business Warehouse, where we have different domain-specific languages. So if I work at a customer, I have often a mixture of languages. And also Excel is a very important language I have to keep in mind if I want to understand uh, an application a solution. So, um, it's on GitHub. There's a domain already. Uh, and what I got was uh, diagrams like this. Okay, no Tudor doesn't want me to use a force attraction diagram, <laughs> but it's just beautiful and I like it. And uh, this is a typical from a big company, it's not a small company, but this is a customer development. Because SAP is a software company, but people who buy SAP receive also SAP. By the way, it reminds me a bit on small talk. If you, you know, if you get a file 6 or file 7 image, you also have the development environment to make a file 8 yourself. The same is if you buy SAP, you get an environment to, pay to develop SAP V. And so some coding is made with the customer, this is a big application. The second one, you see some connections. Um, and I was really happy, I always wanted to make a t-shirt on this. But uh, my problem is, I'm not an architect. I'm not the one who tells people, okay, no islands, or make this in a more beautiful way. Um, I normally I work as a developer on concrete tasks. So <coughs> the black one is a mess, is a, is a class, the white one is a mess, the blue is an attribute. For instance, I have to change a, a method and I have to understand what is going on its legacy code. What I wanted, what I hope to see was something like this. This is a part of the SAP extractor. Red are methods, blue are attributes of a class, the gray boxes is a class, the package is not shown here. Uh, but what I added is, this is what I wanted is commenting. I wanted um, to arrange the object in a different way so that it fits to my mind and I want to see what's important for my change I'm currently doing. So my aspect I wanted to see. And then I wanted to store this and if I come back a year or so later I wanted to withdraw such a diagram uh, in, the, that's in the way that it's correct. If a method is a way it shall be going. If a method is adding, it shall be added. <coughs> and I was doing a lot of diagrams with PowerPoint or so, or other tools, and it was a lot of work. A typical effort to make a diagram is maybe a day or so. Or even I was paid for a customer for making a diagram for two day work. And such a diagrams are outdated within weeks. And the second problem is that making diagrams costs me a lot of stress. 
Uh, I jumped to Simon Brown, uh, who is somehow related to ideas to Tudor this morning. Uh, he is an architect and evangelist for visualization. And he says, um, diagrams are only useful um, if they are connected to the coding. And uh, the talk uh, Tudor gave this morning was just something I had out of the mind when I saw his talk 2015. Um, it should be possible to code and to have this visualization, this artifacts to understand the code, to speak about the code in a way that it's related. Like if you go, for instance, if you design uh, this computer aided design an airplane, you know, everything is connected. You, know? you have the diagrams, everything, and if you change some feature of the plane, everything is updated automatically and you can speak about it and you can understand it. Um, then I contacted Alexandre Vergel on Slack, told him my problem and he helped me a bit to use Huasal. And I had, this is the same by the same, this is the application I showed before, this force attraction diagram. Uh, now this is uh, everything very small. But this is the coding I worked on. Uh, this is a later coding version because I was able to highlight con uh, connected elements here. Uh, the problem is, this is SAP methods. Uh, a Java method may be one line long. SAP methods can be 500 line longs. So this is indeed uh, very high complexity uh, with wrong names, wrong coding, duplicated coding, and outdated coding. So um, I think it's good to, to show the complexity, but it was not, but it was not the tool I needed to, to work with it. Um, okay, then I proceeded with the uh, coding Alexander Bedell gave me and tried to learn smart talk last year. Uh, later on I was able, thanks to iceberg and Git, I was able to move to, to Git and it's really a very, very good improvement. I'm really thankful for everyone who did this. I will pay you It's really godless. Uh, okay, uh, the final one number is not so high. But what is important is, is the technique inside. It's, it's the issue tracking I have, it's the version name. It really makes programming easier. Um, I call it now Miso to Model just to have a name. And I will give you a short demo how I'm currently working. Um, by the way, this is not a theoretical talk that I give. Um, but indeed, I'm explaining how I do currently SAP development. Um, I will not explain you the SAP extractor. I would do it to SAP people. I think no one of you is working with SAP, so there's no sense for me to show you how to extract from an SAP system and model information. Uh, but this is already done. Um, and uh, I have to support here. Yeah. And what I'm doing is, um, I think Muse is known to everyone, or someone who's not aware of Muse? Okay. Um, so I have a Muse model, I have it currently for Java, for Java, not, not working well, um, I have it for Smalltalk. And I use the features of the inspector. So um, I, I send to this application some messages. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Hmm? We have two exercises, so it's hard to read. Uh, uh, to read. Uh, I do not expect you to understand to read this. The more important are the web links or so. Um, but what it is, uh, the playground is something like uh, like an user interface. I have no user interface. Uh, what I'm doing is um, I want to have a certain aspect of a software, so I call it currently layout. And for instance, for this um, talk, I have a layout called demo of this day to day. I, I set it to the application. And then I go to the classes. We go visualize, go visualize, move it to model software exploration tool. A warning. 
And now I have a big guy over. Because I gave no filtering, no, no tweaking. Um, what I'm doing then is, for instance, I'm interested in this. No, no, no. I'm interested, for instance, in this method. Click on this. Again, the uh, inspector helped me a lot to not be forced to develop an, an, an user interface. I have a context menu. And I send him a statement highlight, including me. And I give him the layer information, one layer above and one layer below. And I send it. And this is a tweaking of raw style. This is, this is the highest framework I have. And I was able to, to tweak raw style to have an automatic highlighting. And now everything that's connected to this message is um, displayed. The next thing I want to do, I want to suppress everything else. So I sent a statement, suppress others, uh, used by layers. One layer above, one layer below. Because I want to see only methods and attributes that are connected in one layer. Okay, now we remember this. Now I draw the diagram once again. And have a smaller diagram. Next point is I said remove temporary because I do not want highlighting. <coughs> um, I want a different positioning. What was it called? Normally I draw everything to the left side. And then I make um, an arrangement that makes sense to me. Normally I stop with what's beautiful because um, I use it not so much for management communication. And then I can remember this. And I write it to an XML file. I also can set uh, a comment, set every diagram comment. Remember this? Now I send, make the diagram again. <coughs> and the interesting thing is, um, this diagram is based on this information, gives me everything connected to this method. So if the coding is changed, I can generate a similar diagram but with new methods or without deleted methods in the future. I can make the diagram bigger, for instance, like I said, I want also everything that's related to this method. Set the same, set the same statement. And generate it again. And now I have a bigger diagram. Okay. Uh, When I go to the what is done, um, there's an XML file, and you have here um, the method name, the class name, and the positioning for the for the for the diagram. And we have the comments and the suppression information. And then I store, and whenever I, I, I come back to, to the part of coding I'm working, I'm just reading it, uh, the information from this XML and generate the diagram again. Um, there's a wonderful cartoon by James Harris I just want to show um, that explains the background a bit. Yes, and um, this is also my problem. 
<laughs> I think there may be two points. One is there are people with a very good ability to remember things. Uh, for these people, the mental model will not collapse in such a way. But you should not forget, one point is understanding your own code, but the second uh, point is not working alone or handling over an application to another colleague. So even if I manage to keep the mental model in my mind, I have to communicate it in my team to new colleagues, uh, to people who work 10 years later doing maintenance phase uh, with my application. And uh, this you cannot do by the ability to remember. Uh, I forgot, uh, yes, this is the last one. So the question is really, can we materialize the mental model? My feeling is that, uh, yes, using Moodle, using some tweaking, some add-on um, coding, it is possible to, to build a tool. Uh, what for me is really important is, um, you know, I'm a full-time SAP consultant developer. Um, I'm not paid for this all, so everything I did is on top, it is in my spare time. So when I work in my spare time, I need the best tool I can think of. And I have the feeling that uh, this is uh, the Faro environment, the small church community provided me with the tools that gave me the chance to make this done in a in time that I would otherwise not have uh, to do it. I want to show a professional um, software exploration tool. I take Source Trail. It is for C, C++ and Java. Um, it is quite cheap, so you can count it like uh, open source. 180 euros for an one seedless license is really, really low. Most tools I saw were 1,000 euros and 2,000. So it has the chance that the developer can buy it. And okay. This is uh, the Java um, extractor uh, from, from you. <coughs> um, it has a search pane, it has a visualization, it has a coding. It has a fuzzy search, for instance, I want to look for the main method. If I click MN, it finds already main. Now this is the main method, and now I can see in yellow this is method, blue are attributes, this are, this are the classes, and I see the dependencies, and I can navigate through the coding here, and whenever I click here, on the right side it's updated, it's where you are, Again, also you can click here, and then you have a relation to this. Um, one difference is um, everything looks more beautiful. Saying as a paid program, program it has to be beautiful. Whereas what I did is not looking beautiful, but for me it is convenient. As a developer, I do not need a, I have somehow the feeling that beautiful diagrams, I would say, are maybe not so helpful than ugly diagrams because ugly diagrams sometimes have the features I need when I work. So I would least uh, give the, the developer the decisions what layout you really need. Okay, then let's switch back. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, this is my typical impression when I see legacy code, I understand nothing. When I go to source trail, this is an, a tool that visualizes um, a part of the source coding as a feeling that I have a torch light. No, and I see, okay, what is there? Okay, what is there? Another class. What is there? You remember when I showed this uh, source trail demo, yeah? you can move over from coding to coding, and you always see the environment very well. But um, um, it was not a complete mental map. When I think of what I did with Moodle to Model, to me it is a complete ma uh, mental map. It is not so much optimized on exploring code, it is more optimized on on making a diagram that is connected to the source code and where the parts of the code that are relevant are highlighted. 
And if you go to this, you're normally lost. Um, the key word is software exploration tools. One point is to explore the software, but I use also my tool for exploring coding. The other is to remember, um, whenever I look for software exploration tools, I do not find really tools that um, have this functionality I showed with adding commands, with adding layouting, storing. I must say I really do not find tools like this. Um, and uh, my personal impression is that it makes my life doing development easier. Because I have a diagram, I can keep things in mind. Um, what I added, for instance, when I uh, looked to the literature, I added links. Because um, linking from a, from a diagram to a code saved me a lot of time um, compared to navigated navigating an eclipse. Um, a typical criticism is um, you can do it without. But I think uh, it was also a tutor who said it this morning. The point is yes, you can do many things without. But if you do if you make a diagram in in a minute, you do make a diagram. If a diagram takes an hour, you will not make a diagram. And uh, even so, I did compare it where, uh, I made a lot of diagrams, but uh, after using Muse, I made thousands of diagrams. And I made it every day, and I made it without adding stress to me. And there appears to be some, something like a low adaption problem regarding software exploration tools. Of course, Scientists are working on software exploration tools many, many years. It's an old topic. Um, and they're still not understood why, why these tools are not accepted. Maybe they are wrong tools, but maybe the best solution would be to put it into the EDIL. So what I expect in Faro, not far in the future, is that we have um, in, in the in the editor, all this visualization features. And I think when we start with doing this, uh, tools like this will be um, adapted more better. Um, I first thought I'd do it for legacy code. That is also the reason that commenting is so important. The other point in legacy code, often names are uh, so wrong that they are really a problem. I'm currently thinking of an editor where I can do some, some smart renaming. Because if I do a naming, the, um, the, the application fails. But often I have to remember this name is wrong, I need this name, this name, this name. Um, the other point is new code. New code for me is code with a high test coverage and good design. Um, but my feeling is um, whatever you do, you you get all the new code and get lost and I use this currently for both type of codes because I must say the difference between legacy code and my own code I don't see it. I can write a mess like everyone else can do it. <laughs> um, okay, just um, some links to an article by my guy and story and Sionali. I tried a bit to have a look into the theory. Um, I have a roadmap currency to simplify installation, to jump into a software that I already made. Um, uh, I want to make it more easy to use. Uh, okay, this is some links. This is uh, the tool I made, uh, the text structure, okay, software, and everything I find out I will post on Twitter. You're welcome to follow it. Uh, thank you. Any questions?
when you model when you model SAP, yeah. uh, was Famix good enough? I, I decided to map everything to package class method attribute and I used the modifier to tell what kind of object I have because I, I, modi I extracted web info upper, I extract sub business warehouse transformations and uh, my feeling was if I map everything to a correct MOOSE representative I will fail to have this visualization tool Okay, because so just that you know, maybe you can discuss with Pavel. I don't know where he is. There, yes. Yeah. So we are when we use Moose on uh, large C plus plus systems or also large EDA, which is not completely OO or not OO at all. We got some problems to model really well the the things. So we were reusing some part of Fabix but they were not quite alright, so we, it worked. But, but at the end, the problem that we have is that we were thinking that we should really revisit Famix so that people can get uh, smaller building bricks so that they can build the right abstraction that they want for day without trying to... Make sense. Uh, what I have in mind is I need a, a, a modeling where I have code building entities and when I pointed here to a, to a red a box, for me it was a code billing entity and the blue one attributes was for me a data billing entity and class and packages are just containers uh, and so it doesn't, it's not important whether what is here in the class has not have to be a class in my application, it is just a container and then I need this information what it is really and then I need the link to the source code and I think the link to the source code is important. Uh, what I decided in, in case of SAP was not to extract the source code because I want people not to be afraid that intellectual property is lost if I extract uh, source code information. Uh, so just giving a link, I think, is enough, at least for SAP. Yeah.